Howdy everybody, this is the first installment in a little series that there'll hopefully be more little episodes about uh, that I'd like to dub Don't Believe the Hype. Uh, this is basically going to focus on things that, you know, often relating to vans or just kind of marketing by companies that, you know, perhaps a lawyer would describe as like deceptive advertising. Uh, but I would just kind of like to summarize as uh, companies hoping that their customers are ignorant or dumb. Or sometimes I just think it's the companies that don't even know that they're presenting misleading information. So today's first installment is going to be on window shades uh, for camper vans and their thermal or like insulating properties. Now, and what this video is going to demonstrate is that all the companies I can find that are making these removable window shades are using this sort of foil faced insulation as the core uh, with fabric on both sides of it. Now in like a home building application, which a lot of these products is where they come from, you know, they have two properties that make them great insulators if used properly. And that is that as light shines on them, it will reflect that energy back out and not absorb it. And on the back side, if you've got another air gap here, this side will have what's called low emissivity. And as a result, even if this, you know, material is warm, it's not emitting a whole bunch of that heat. But so what we're going to demonstrate is that when you cover over these sides with fabrics, you remove all of those positive properties and as a result have like no radiant properties. And that is what all these companies are marketing to you. So to start off with, I'm gonna highlight four different companies that I think come up at the top of the Google search if you look for these kinds of shades. That said, I haven't found a single company that doesn't promise these kinds of thermal benefits. And so I'm highlighting these four, but I'm just picking on them because they come up on top of the list. And just to come clear, you know, I've actually ordered from three of these companies when I was making vans for customers, and they've always made a really good, well-fitting product. Like the workmanship of the product is fantastic. It is only this like bogus marketing that's sort of like the thorn in my side as I like look through all of this. Okay, so the first company that I'd like to kind of highlight is The Wonderful. Now these guys flood my Instagram, and let's just look at some of their marketing. You know, some of their images here about all the great things of their product. They state here that they have automotive foil insulation as well as 95% UV reflective. Um, and if we come down here to the product details, we'll see that they have a automotive insulation that is 95% radiant heat reflective. Now, I don't know about this whole UV thing. This is not the only company that kind of touts their benefits with UV. But if we go over and like search solar radiation by wavelength, you know, we can go to this link from NOAA and uh, it will tell us that 43% of radiant energy is visible, 49% is infrared, and then only 7% is UV. So I don't really know what the advantages of blocking UV. I think glass itself actually blocks either UVA or UVB. So even, you know, there's some minuscule percentage if you're actually worried about thermal insulation, you know, focusing your energy on blocking UV is kind of a waste of time. But you know, perhaps they're like uh, afraid of getting tan in their van or something. I don't, I don't know. So this is not the only company, the Wonderful, but blocking UV, I just think, is kind of a marketing thing. I don't get the benefit of, an, you know, grouping it with thermal properties. Next up is Van Made Gear. Uh, these guys have this great looking graphic on their website. As you see, also UV radiant heat. I'm not sure if this is two things, but you know, they claim that it blocks 97% of radiant heat transfer in the summer but it also has this nice black material for a stealth look. Again, UV, radiant heat, kind of the same as the other company. Continuing onwards, we have Van Essentials. These guys in their product listing, they state that superior temperature regulation through automotive grade insulation. And if you go to their frequently asked questions, they'll tell you that they're using a product that is superior to what is commonly called low E. And it has a five millimeter thick insulation foam with a true double faced aluminum. Now, as we're gonna demonstrate in just a minute, with this fabric that they've got on the outside of it, this faced aluminum is just bogus. It doesn't actually you know, bring you any benefit. And finally, we'll go to Quest Overland, and these guys actually do use low E insulation. Uh, where is the reflective surface on your shades? Again, reflective insulation between two layers of high quality ripstop nylon. That's basically no longer reflective surface. And it says that the R values of low E can be up to 11. These got to 11. However, one of the benefits of low E insulation is it stops about 97% of radiant energy. And as we're about to show, the E in low E stands for emissivity, which is actually a very helpful property of this insulation. But by covering both sides with a dark material, we are removing any sort of like radiant blocking properties or like low emissivity properties. So all of this is just bullshit right here. But let's demonstrate that right now in a little experiment. 
So talking about reflectivity, emissivity, I think the best way to drive home a lot of these points is to just demonstrate it um, here on the workbench. Now, a lot of the stuff about reflectivity we're gonna talk about is gonna be like verbatim of, you know, the kind of that debate about 10, 15 years ago about insulating vans with reflectics. You know, sure, you can get these R values of like 20 if you have a consistent air gap on both sides, but in a van where you've got a sandwich between the sheet metal and like some wood, you're gonna get an R value of like maybe one. So a lot of the stuff that you're gonna hear about reflectivity, you've probably heard before, but I think it's also the emissivity of like foil-faced uh, insulation that is kind of critical for a well-performing uh, sunshade. So let me just demonstrate this here on the bench, and I think that will just make this concept a lot easier to understand. We've got a heat lamp that's gonna kind of simulate our sunshine, and then we've actually got a piece of that low E here that we're gonna be shining this light on. Now we're going to essentially be casting this on the outside as if it's in a windshield, and then we'll have a surface temperature on the back of it using a little thermistor that's been taped down. Um, after about five minutes, we'll watch what the temperatures do. Then we'll start by putting black on the outside of it. Then we'll put black on the inside of it, and then we'll do both and basically demonstrate how much worse the performance of this like foil-faced reflective insulation is once it's been covered up. So let's do that. So there's about 50 minutes of footage of me experimenting with this, and most of it is me sitting around and then just writing down some numbers every minute or so. So let me just try to annotate what happened, what I found, and then just show a couple highlights of my observations as this was happening. So here's the reaction after the first five minute trial with no fabric on either side. All right, so we just passed the uh, five minute mark. And actually, this was just reading 73.9. We've gone up by 0.4 degrees, 74.3, but this has been fairly stable in the last three minutes. So, you know, always when the camera's watching, it will change. But anyways, I thought that this would be a good time to talk about some cool things about reflectivity and emissivity. First off, this is a reflective surface, right? So if we take our IR gun and we point it out here, we're gonna see some pretty high temperatures. But if you move your temperature gun like this, you're gonna see some pretty low temperatures. Like if you actually see this red dot right there, check this out, we're at 67.1 and we're essentially shining on the same spot, but now we're seeing 200 degrees. So how could the IR of this one thing, right? We're supposed to be measuring the infrared that this is emitting. Well, since this is such a highly reflective surface, what's actually happening is this is sort of working like a mirror. So when we're looking at it like this, what we're actually seeing is the reflected image of this light bulb, which was probably measuring somewhere too high, almost 300 degrees, right? So when we talk about emissivity, so this little temperature reading, right, is 74.3. But, you know, hold on, let me come around to the other side so this is facing upright. <laughs> like this thing with a low emissivity, it is not radiating much heat. So if you look at this, we're at 64.9. And then the tape, which has high emissivity, the temperature is higher right here because that tape is actually emitting heat while a low emissivity item will not be emitting much infrared. So this appears to be cooler, even though we know from that thermocouple measurement right there, that this thing is heated up. It is just not emitting the heat. So after that, I taped some umbrella fabric to the side facing the light, and very quickly things got hot at the thermocouple. Oh yeah, I think it's getting too hot. I think it's bubbling my insulation. Um, we're 40. 45 seconds in and the internal temperature is probably gonna cross 100 degrees right now. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll regret putting the light on there. 105, oh boy. But this was a really good moment to show how the low emissivity of that low E material means that the inside of it, even though the thermocouple is hot, is not actually radiating heat. So, you know, we've leveled off at about 131. We're coming up on four and a half minutes. And now let's check this out. So with materials like this, this entire surface is hot. You know, we look at this, it's 163. We look at it like this. It is a little higher, um, but it's not really changing that much. You know, this thing is radi It's not a mirror anymore that's just reflecting this. This surface temperature is actually that hot. That's why we are getting these measurements. I mean, towards the front here, right by the light, we're pushing 250 degrees. 
So that is, we have removed the reflective properties of this. We are not seeing the reflection of the light. That is the surface temperature actually right there. But we still have that low emissivity on this side. Once again, we'll come around the bench and check this out. So here we are seeing 64 degrees. And then when we scan over this tape, it's hotter. You know, it's reading 131, but you know, our observation window here is 123. So you guess we're reading 129 degrees right now. So that's actually pretty damn close. Um, so that's this little surface area right here has uh, high emissivity. So basically it is actually emitting that infrared radiation. It is emitting that heat. While the rest of this, even though it is physically that temperature, it's low emissivity, is just kind of reflecting the ambient IR, and it's about 65 degrees then. So that is the benefit of low emissivity. Is Although this is quite warm to touch, it's over 100 degrees, it appears, it is radiating essentially the same energy as something at 65 degrees. Then I flipped the experiment around with the reflective side to the light and then the black on the temperature side. I think as we're going to see here and we'll continue through the next round that having small air gaps between the fabric and the foil, those actually skew the temperature readings. As we'll see at the end with the numbers, the thermocouple doesn't heat up as much when installed against the fabric as it is when it was installed against the foil. But I think that's because the foil is just a really good actual heat conductor versus with the fabric air gaps. It's just uh, basically isolating it a little bit. All right, we're at about, coming up on five minutes. We're in the 67 range. Come on, buddy. Um, and we're actually not even climbing as high as we had done when we had the shiny side both out. We got that black on the back side and we're not climbing as high. And I think this is because we have a little bit of an air gap here. So if we could actually hold that firmly, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Any kind of air baffle is just helping this design so much. So you can just see, you know, if we put a little bit of pressure there, hold on, I'm having trouble pressurizing and not knocking it over. Yeah, we're at 69 degrees and, oh, yeah, that's about all we can force out of it. You know, we're about 69 with keeping that solid contact. So, you know, that emissivity, it's just not passing that heat through when you have a little bit of an air gap. That reflective side, that's just working wonders. You know, we still got that thing where if we look at it indirectly, but if we get the reflection of the light, you know, it's acting like a mirror. It is essentially seeing all that heat coming from the lamp. And then the final round is just black fabric on the side facing the light and the black on the inside. And let me just show you my observations from that. Okay, we just passed the five minute mark. We're up to 86 degrees over here. Let's just quick, take some quick observations. First off, this front side is measuring like 300 degrees in the worst of spots, 280s around. And since it is that, you know, black absorbing fabric, we are not just seeing the reflection of the light, you know, as we were demonstrating earlier, this is truly the temperature of that fabric right now. Let's go to the other side. Earlier, how we demonstrated with the emissivity, how we are, you know, the actual physical temperature may be higher, but what is radiating towards us is not that. Now, so we have little air gaps, as you can see, we don't have perfect contact here. So this is a very patchy thing, but you know, we've got zones that are pushing over hundred degrees where the fabric is touching the insulation directly, right where our temperature sensor is. You know, we've got 80s, but just next to it, we got 100 degrees. So this is actually radiating at 100 degrees versus when we did have that silver showing, it was radiating kind of a reflection of the ambient temperatures, so like 60, 65 in here. So, you know, this is still showing 62 here. The black starts to show 70. Um, just because it is, you know, has a high emissivity. So that's just sort of demonstrating how having silver on the inside, even though it's ugly, just doesn't radiate as much heat into the inside space. 
Okay, so here are some numbers just so you guys can see. Chicken scratch, classic for my channel. Zero to five minutes, you know, first measurement. The light is shining on the shiny side. Light is shining on the black side. Shiny black and then black black. And then these are the measurements for the thermocouple, not for the infrared gun. So as you can see, having the shiny outside means we have the two lowest temperatures at the thermocouple. And if it's shining on the black side, then we get more heating on the inside. Now, these two numbers are a little uh, misleading. This is the thermocouple measurement. So you gotta remember that although this material, like the actual foil facing on the inside was 131 degrees, and it was conducting that heat well to the thermocouple, as you remember when we scanned around with the IR gun, it's not actually radiating that much heat. Versus here, the thermocouple got to 86, and as we saw kind of panning around the black fabric, you know, the numbers were anywhere from like 70 to 100 degrees. So this is actually radiating a lot, radiating a lot more heat towards the inside, even though since we had those inconsistent air gaps between the foil and the fabric, the thermocouple didn't actually get as hot. So I think the takeaways here is that clearly leaving shiny on both sides, you know, first you're reflecting a lot of that heat, and then second you're not radiating it to the inside. Shiny on both sides is far and away the most superior design for thermal insulation. Adding fabric on one side or both sides like quickly diminishes the performance. So I think it's really misleading to try to tout the reflective insulation properties of this. That said, we did see, you know, the kind of like patchwork of having those air gaps. Air gaps do help. So let's quickly look at those four companies again. And from physically handling, handling these products in the past, you know, they are well made. So I think from what I remember, it's a nice and tight product, but let's look at some of their photos on their website. You know, the wonderful maybe in some of their example images, they have what looks like maybe the most potential for actual air gap between the reflective layer and the fabric. You know, it's kind of hard to tell. This little section right here looks pretty tight, but some other parts of it, you know, look like they're sag a little bit. Van Made Gear looks pretty tight on all their photos. Um, you know, maybe a little bits of air gaps, but pretty close to a direct contact. Van Essentials, same thing, looks pretty tight. And then Quest Overland, I don't know, maybe kind of in the middle on some of these. This is a privacy curtain. What I would say though is, you know, these do still provide some insulating properties. Uh, you know, they, even though this is maybe an R value of anywhere from like 0.1 to one, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, foam material they used here in the middle. I mean, that's a very minuscule R value, but since these are, you know, usually like a nice tight blackout shade, I find that it's kind of creating this extra air pocket, this sort of envelope of air. So, you know, it prevents like convection in your van from just like having that hot air kind of convect throughout your van. So, I mean, there is definitely some uh, insulating properties of these. I just think it's falsely advertising uh, to claim that they have any reflective properties whatsoever. All right, so that's my little rant about window shades. Um, I think if you want this style of window shades, I've always found them to be well built and they work. I personally don't like window shades that you have to remove and then store somewhere else. I'd rather just kind of build them into the van. But if you are looking for shades like this, I think they'll work just fine. I just get irked that I think it's kind of bogus to advertise any sort of like reflective properties of theirs. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found that interesting. I think understanding material properties like this is uh, really beneficial if you're like trying to design something or, you know, just as you're going about your day, you know, it's cool to appreciate, you know, interesting things like that. So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks so much for watching.